This video is an invitation to witness the decoding of the many moon dreams people have been having over the years. These are dreams that include multiple moons, different colored moons, suns, stars, or a combination of all of the above. A lot of these dreamers consistently have a two moon dream or a combination of a two moon, two sun, a parade of planets, stuff like that. And they're confused as to what it means and there's been very little information in the Christian world that can nail this down and come up with a reasonable interpretation of what these dreams mean, what these moons mean, what these suns mean. A couple of years ago I did a deep dive into this and I thought I had some of the answers and the dots were kind of lining up, events were converging, but obviously it did not deliver because we're still waiting for the rapture, we're still waiting for some of the more serious prophetic events that Jesus prophesied of, that the prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of. These, these events have not happened yet. Looks like they're getting close, but as far as the rendering of what these dreams were trying to tell the dreamers, obviously it did not manifest the results we were hoping for. So I've been working on this ever since then, and I think I've come up with more clear answers to what God was trying to reveal to these dreamers and to the body of Christ as to the signs and wonders in the heavens. Now as a disclaimer I'll come right out and say I am not a prophet, don't want to be one, I am not an interpreter of dreams. Rather what I'm doing here is I'm using simple astronomy and science and common sense to produce the answers I'm looking for. And these answers have to line up with reality, they have to line up with common sense, they have to line up with God's words. Those are the challenges I face, and that's the standard I put on myself. Now I'm taking an unusual approach to looking at these end time events when they might occur. And what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm looking at various video postings that people have put up over the last 10 years where they claim they had a dream from the Lord and they're explaining what the dream is and more specifically dealing with moons and planets and the sun. And often many of them say, well, when I see this, I know the rapture is going to take place shortly thereafter but they also admit that they're clueless as to what they saw and what it means and what that could point to as far as a season or a date or an appointed time of God. Now when I started this a couple years ago, when I would see a posting which involved multiple moons, I thought it meant multiple months because a moon represents a month. I didn't really dial in until just more recently that these moons that these people saw, and we'll stick specifically to the moons right now, we'll get to the suns later, that what they saw was two moons on the same day, or the same night, so to speak. And almost all of the dreams consisted of two full moons. A couple of them had a few extras, like three or four, but I would say the majority had two moons, and I just recently realized that what they were describing was two full moons in the same night. It can also mean two moon phases side by side. In other words, one month, then the next month. So two full moons could also mean, well here I'll give you an example, a full moon in September going forward until the full moon of October. And that could possibly be just the 30 days or 29 and a half days between those full moons, or could represent both entire moon phases from crescent new moon to fully waned moon with the full moon in the middle giving us a full Hebrew month followed by the next Hebrew month. And we'll see in part two and part three examples where Dreamer sees four brightly lit full moons followed by an orangish red full moon and in her dream sees herself standing on a hunter's tower which can be equated also to a next moon phase. So in essence she's seeing six moon phases back to back to back to back with the event in question and of concern being on that last hunter's moon. So basically this boils down to looking at all the parameters in the dream to decide if it's multiple moons seen in the same night, or multiple moons during the year, or multiple moons during a tetrad, or a series of tetrads. It all depends upon all the little bits and pieces of information that make up the total narrative of the dream. It kind of sounds complicated, but it's very simple once you kind of understand how these things work. 
And unfortunately, the learning curve I went through was kind of like the school of hard knocks, where I learned this through making multiple mistakes, but that was the learning curve required to figure out this decoding stuff. Hey, this is uncharted waters, and I could only work with the stuff I had to work with. And as the days and weeks and months went forward in this journey of trying to learn how to decode these things, well, more information and more dreams came forth, and I really started to figure these things out. So that's the reason for the updates. And it has become very clear to me in the last couple months that this was God's plan all along, that being the train wrecks and the face plants and the mistakes, because that required me to go back into all these things and dig it up again and get deeper into it and get deeper into God's word. And that extra time and extra effort gave God more time to expose and reveal things. And I'm hoping you'll pick up on those changes and those updates and my corrections. And you'll see that this is exactly what God purposed. Just leading us one step at a time and correcting us and correcting me as things progress forward. And the bottom line is God's trying to restore his appointed times, his covenant dates, and his convocations. And I'm thinking he's going to walk us through every one of them for this year, 2022, before completely fulfilling all these dreams he's been given these dreamers. Because in many of these dreams, the last thing that happened, or the last thing these dreamers sensed in their dreams, had to do with serious end-time events, especially rapture events. So now I'm going to talk about what two moons represent if they're seen in the same, the same night sky. Now there is only one astronomical event where we see two moons in the same sky in the same night. And it's not the planet Nibiru, which is a joke in Christian mythology. And if you bother to actually go in and research it, it came out of some sci-fi witchcraft by a lady who claimed she had a chip implanted in her head from these aliens from one of the planets that orbited this brown dwarf star, Nibiru, so that they could communicate with her. And this brown dwarf star that is supposed to come into our solar system and disrupt the Earth and destroy all this stuff, it, it, it's total garbage. We have tens of thousands, tens of thousands of semi-professional and professional independent astronomers who have access and utilize satellites and telescopes that can pick out a rock on the moon, that can pick out a binary star system hundreds of light years away. Uh, they have access to this stuff, but they can't see a brown dwarf planetary system coming into our own solar system, sneaking up on us. Excuse me? What's wrong with this picture? Uh, we need to wash this stuff out of the body of Christ and get to a deeper grasp on reality. Unfortunately, when these people get these dreams and they have two moons, they don't know what's going on. They don't understand a lot of the astronomical events that take place. And so they're kind of left hanging in the lurch and they come up with, uh, well, it's a second moon. God's going to pop up another moon next to their original moon and we're going to have two moons. No, that, that's not what God's saying. It appears that God chooses to use only a short period of time when anointing people with these moon dreams. I guess he likes to keep a lot of this a mystery, which forces us to dig into it to find out what it means. There's a scripture that says it's the glory of God to hide an item, and it's the glory of kings to seek them out. Well, let's seek them out. And again, I say I know of only one astronomical event which takes place in the heavens where there are two moons seen in the same evening. That would be a lunar eclipse. The moon comes up full. Then it is eclipsed, so you don't see it, so to speak. I mean, you'll see a shadow of it. It, it. Some of them will turn blood red. But in a manner of speaking, it's gone. It's covered. It's hidden. And then after a few hours, it's back full again. So you got a moon, no moon, a moon. Same night, two moons. That is a lunar eclipse. And when you go back and you re-listen to these videos that these people put up and their testimony of what they saw in the dream, it matches perfectly. So I'm going to throw one up to you right now. And this one helped confirm in my thinking that what she saw was a lunar eclipse. Now this dream was posted about 10 years ago. And if you went back and listened to it, it's still on YouTube, just dial in on your search engine for YouTube, Two Moons and Two Suns, or just Two Moon Dreams, or Two Moon Two Suns Dreams. And she comes up later. You'll see her picture there in, in the thumbnail. Listen to what she has to say. And all of a sudden I see two moons. Okay, two moons. Um, 
at, you know, like right next to each other, and they were full, and they were white, shining, but I noticed that one of them was just slightly smaller than the other one. But she said she saw two moons, and one was just a little bit smaller than the other. Well, an interesting thing happens before a lunar eclipse and after a lunar eclipse, and that is the moon moves. It will move either closer or farther away from the Earth. There's a small differentiation in the distance. The difference on average is between 1,000 kilometers to 5,000 kilometers, which is a very small movement, but from a perspective on Earth, if you're looking at the moon before the eclipse and after, that movement will determine the size differential between the two illuminations of that full moon on the same night. In other words, one's going to be a little bit smaller than the other. There's the confirmation. She knows nothing about moons. She knows nothing about the orbit of the moon. She knows nothing about eclipses. And she's telling this stuff, not knowing what it is, claiming she doesn't know what it is, but that's what it is. You see, I'm lining stuff up with science, with astronomy, with reality. The reality is the size of the moon that we see when we're looking up at the moon before the lunar eclipse to that which we see after the lunar eclipse is different. The size of the moon is different, even though the moon itself never changes size. But what we see changes size. And that's how God puts it in their dream, to put it in their mind, to explain or give a valuable piece of information of what he's talking about. So when this lady and, and other people ask the Lord and pray for a rapture dream, when's it going to happen? So if God is answering them and saying it's going to be on a night where there are two full moons, well, that's on a night when there's a lunar eclipse. And there are only a couple of the appointed dates of God, the appointed times of God, every year that land on his appointed times that associate closely to a full moon. doesn't say that you conduct the appointed time on a full moon. He says you conduct it on the 15th of the Hebrew month. That would be Passover and the first day of the seven days of tabernacles. So if they're in earnest and asking God, when is the rapture going to be? And God's saying, two moons. That's what comes back in their dreams. God's pointing to a full moon event, which when there's two of them on the same night, that's a lunar eclipse. Happens to be one coming up here, May 15th and 16th, 2022. And we will discover that that is God's true Passover for this year, 2022. And there's also a second blood moon this year, and that's on November 7th into the 8th, and that will be the day before this year's tabernacles. But now that that first blood moon of May 15th into the 16th has come and gone, well, now we put our focus of that last blood moon, the last blood moon of this current tetrad, that being on November 7th into the 8th. In addition, there's always the argument, is this the outtaking of the bride, the rapture of the bride, or is it the rapture of the guests of the wedding? Are there other raptures? I'm of the belief and the conviction that there are multiple out-translations, the first being the outtaking of the bride, then possibly a second of the bride party or the 144,000, and then there's a the guest at the wedding. There could be two, three, four out translations in these end of days of believers. We see in Revelation 3 verses 10 and 11 around there where Philadelphia is kept out of the trials that will come upon the entire world. Well, the next church mentioned is Laodicea that gets to go through the fire. They're both churches of God, and one is removed or kept from some serious stuff coming down on the earth, as I would think would be judgment and trials, and the other is put right in the middle of it to heat them up and get them red hot and on fire for God. Sounds like multiple translations to me. So all this battling over, well, post-trib, pre-trib, mid-trib, pan-trib is all a waste of time. What will happen is what will happen, and we have no control over that. Your best recourse is to pursue Christ as the bride pursues her bridegroom. That would put you in Philadelphia. So in these dreams, you can interchange blood moon for lunar eclipse, for two moons, and vice versa. They all are saying the same thing. Two full moons in the same night is a lunar eclipse and will be a blood moon, but it's got to be in the same night.
and they don't necessarily have to fall on an appointed time of God. But I'm thinking for these biblical events, that is what God is going to dial into. I went back on the software package called Stellarium to around 33 AD, and I found a full blood moon, oh, right about the time of what I thought Passover would be. Quite interesting. So when Jesus was crucified, it's highly likely he was crucified on a full blood moon. And according to the virtual software Stellarium, if we dial back the calendar, we find a four blood moon tetrad in 32 to 33 AD. The first blood moon of that tetrad on April 14th of the year 32 sees the moon going into full eclipse at 9 a.m. in the morning Greenwich Mean Time, or UTC, which would be noon Jerusalem time. Jesus was put on the cross at 9 a.m. and the entire world went dark at noon Jerusalem time. We've got some powerful typology there that we can draw from. I'm leaning heavily towards April 14th of the year 32 AD as the date for Jesus' crucifixion. And to steal even a little bit more thunder for this presentation, I've noted that the fig tree prophecy of a generation of Israel seeing all these events before the generation is completed, well, if you take 80 years, if that's the generation, because 70 didn't work out, it's between 70 and 80, some people think. If you take 80 years and add it to May 14th, 1948, when Israel became the end-time generation, the fig tree, as it were, you add 80 years, subtract 7, you come out with Passover of 2022. And the Last Supper that would correspond would be on the 14th of May 2022. Well, that's exactly 80 years. Subtract 7 from May 14th of 1948. And then remember, you have to complete that last year, which means it's not going to be Passover of 2021. It will be the Passover of 2022. So from May 14th, 1948, add 80 years, subtract 7, and then complete that year, has us looking at a May 14th of 2022, which would be the anniversary of the Last Supper. So let me start throwing some dreams at you one after another, and I have to kind of burn through these quick. So some of this stuff I'll have some assumptions dialed in just to save time, and you will see that some of these dreams line up with the other dreams, and you'll kind of put the pieces together and connect the dots. But I believe the assumptions that I am putting forth are accurate, or at least the best solution that I can come up with. But i got to get through this stuff quick, just because there's a lot of information. So this is a dream, I believe, probably five to seven years ago. And the lady that posted it talks about two suns with a crescent next to it, followed by two moons with a crescent next to it, and that this happened during the daytime. Now that's important because I keep mentioning the date May 16th, 2022, both the solar eclipse on April 30th and the lunar eclipse on May 16th happened during the daytime if we look at these events from Jerusalem time. So I'll play her posting and then I'll make comment. So I'm looking up at the sky and I see two suns in the sky and a crescent moon. And then it turned into two moons and I seen the crescent moon and it was in daylight. Now bear with me as I do a little creative thinking and embellishment, knowing what these next many dreams are going to say, and they're reflecting back to what she's saying. But because their dreams pointed to a rendering that fits this dream, I need to go with that because it's going to take me way too long to fill in all the blanks. This is what I believe her dream is saying. She first sees a solar eclipse. That would be the two suns. And this has to be the total solar eclipse that we witnessed on December 4th, 2021. She first sees a solar eclipse, and there's a crescent next to it. She thinks it's a crescent moon. I believe it to be a crescent sun, because the next major celestial event in the heavens is going to be a partial solar eclipse on April 30th, 2022. And that creates a crescent sun. The day after that, will produce a crescent moon because a crescent moon follows a fully dead, fully waned, zero illumination moon that will cause the partial solar eclipse on April 30th, 2022. So initially, the two suns she sees is the solar eclipse on December 4th, 2021, and the crescent she sees next to that solar eclipse 
is the next major celestial calendar event, the partial solar eclipse on April 30th, producing a solar crescent. The day following that will produce a sliver moon crescent, which is the first day of the Hebrew year, Rosh Hashanah, that God gave Moses, the month Moses and the children of Israel came out of Egypt. That will be the anniversary of that event initiated by this crescent new moon, which follows that partial solar eclipse. And two weeks after this sliver crescent moon, you have two moons, that being the lunar eclipse of May 16th, 2022. And if you follow the calendar that God gave Moses to determine the Aviv month, those two moons on May 16th, which are a blood moon, will be Passover. I'll explain how that works throughout this video, but right now we got to push forward. So let me connect the dots for you and make it one smooth timeline. The two suns are the solar eclipse, December 4th, 2021. That crescent associated with that solar eclipse is the next solar eclipse, which is a partial solar eclipse that will be seen as a crescent sun. A day or two following that is the crescent moon, for the first day of that Hebrew month in which Passover will fall in this year, and that crescent moon associates with the two moons she sees in her dream, which is a blood moon, because it's a full lunar eclipse, those two moons on May 16th will be Passover. And we find that two weeks later from this crescent on May 16th, 2022. And this rendering of her dream is consistent with all the other dreams we're about to look at. And I looked from the four blood moon tetrad of 2014 and 2015 all the way up to the four blood moon tetrad coming up in 2032, 2033 and this is the only time this happens. This storyline, only time it happens. And again, you'll see that when we marry this dream to all the other dreams we're about to look at, same storyline. Everything matches. They're all saying the same thing. They are all illuminating dates that are rapidly approaching us. Unless I forget, the full moon of May 16th, 2022, will set, that is to say, a moon set. It will set after the sun rises, and that's what she saw in her dream. She saw this moon during daylight. That's important, not only because she said it, but because that's a rare event. That eliminates a lot of other possible contingencies, because those two moons, the first moon, being a bright moon, will be seen in daylight. I'll throw up a picture from Stellarium displaying the virtual reality of this rare event. Now the blood moon phase of that two moons will happen an hour or two later and that's addressed in other dreams. And a quick word of advice, you may want to pull out paper and pencil and actually draw these things out as they're being expressed. I mean, my head is spinning going from a lunar eclipse to a solar eclipse to a parade of stars back to a solar eclipse. Is it a partial eclipse, total eclipse? Where are these heavenly bodies in respect to each other at the time being expressed? It gets kind of confusing. And then we've got multiple dreams all saying the same thing, but some are starting at a lunar eclipse, some are starting at a solar eclipse. Are they starting in the middle of this timeline, the beginning of this timeline, end of the timeline? Like I said, it gets confusing. You may want to draw this out and you'll see everything will fall into place. And this is kind of what God did to them in these dreams. He gave it in pictorial form. It's just that they didn't understand what they were seeing. But now we will understand what they saw. So again, bear with me. I apologize for all the redundancy and throwing the same dates and numbers at you time and time again, and sometimes some poor sound quality. But I have to establish a baseline and expose the patterns. And so I'm taking advantage of the first couple of dreams to really zero in on that so I have solid ground to stand on with all the subsequent dreams that hopefully I get through faster. But once you see the pattern, you'll fly right through it. This will help illuminate those dates I keep talking about and things will be much easier if you just focus on three specific dates. That is April 30th, 2022, May 1st and 2nd of 2022, and May 15th and 16th of 2022. That's the partial solar eclipse followed by the sliver crescent first moon for the Hebrew month followed by the super blood moon which I believe to be Passover for 2022. That's what all these dreams are pointing to. Every single one is pointing to these three dates, as well as some of the biblical prophecies that come from scripture, such as the fig tree generation prophecy, and some of the more scary ones in the book of Revelations. 
And then you'll see, once these newer dreams roll in, you'll see that date extended into the summer and actually onto that last blood moon of the four blood moon tetrad are currently in, that being the blood moon of November 7th into the 8th. But the majority of the dreams you're about to see are going to focus on that Rosh Hashanah blood moon of May 15th, of May 15th into the 16th. And those dreams that I believe had double application actually point to both blood moons. I'll try to explain that, so please hang in there with me. We're going to get through this. So even though this may appear to be extremely tedious, that's because it is extremely tedious. At least these first couple dreams. i got to get that baseline established firmly. And this is something you don't solve in 5, 10, 20 minutes. This teaching video is going to go about 6 hours. I promise you it's going to get more exciting. It's going to get more serious. So hang in there. Please be patient and allow me to walk you through this. I promise you it's going to be a lot shorter than the years and months which God had to use to walk me through it. And it's just in the last couple months that all this stuff gelled and came into focus. So let's push on. And let me just say that the stuff you're seeing now pales in comparison to what you're going to be seeing as we get deeper into this. Well, here's another rapture dream that was posted many years ago. I don't have the date on this, but I remember pulling this dream up and it was entitled something about the rapture. Hopefully you'll see this is identical to the previous dream I just presented you. So listen to what she has to say, then I'll make comment. But I was saying to her, I was like, oh my gosh. There's double of everything. There is double of every, everything in the sky. There's two moons, there's two suns. It was um, it was very, very dark. And then like everything was fading into um, the light area where the suns were. This sun was very, very red. This one was very, very yellow. This moon was actually uh, um, much darker than how I colored it in. And it was something blocking this. So in the dream, she sees two suns and two moons. At least that's what she says she's seeing. And she draws this picture. And on the left-hand side of the picture, she draws two orbs. And the closer one is covered by something. And on the right-hand side, she says those are two suns. One's red and one's yellow. I think she's got it mixed up. I think she's got it backwards. I think the two orbs on the left-hand side, the closer one being covered, that's the solar eclipse that we've been talking about, the partial solar eclipse. And what's covering the closer one is the moon. So you're actually seeing three orbs. You're seeing a sun, a sun, and a moon covering the closer sun, which is going to make those orbs a little bit darker because it's an eclipse. And then to the right-hand side, you see a blood moon followed by a yellow full moon. That is a lunar eclipse blood moon. And when do we see that? May 16th, 2022. I believe both those dreams are saying the same thing. It's just that they misinterpret them because they don't understand that what they're looking at is not a moon, rather it's a sun or vice versa. And if I'm correct in the interpretation of what was actually in their dream, this is talking about the partial solar eclipse on April 30th, followed two weeks later by the full super blood moon lunar eclipse on May 16th. So this is the next dream I want to look at. Again, what I'm trying to do is base this all on simple astronomy, not astrology. Astrology is a religion. Astronomy is a science. Astronomy uses physics and all the laws of nature to help us understand how the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars, constellations, all move in the heavens. And from that, we can predict where a heavenly body might be at any one time. The author sees a parade of events, the first being two moons, then she sees two suns, then she sees an alignment of five planets, and then she sees the moon covering the sun producing a blood-colored conjunction of the moon and the sun. So I'll play it so you can listen to it, and then I'll make comment. Hello, YouTube. This is the third dream I had about there being multiple suns in the sky, and also this time there were two moons. Um, the dream started out with me in a field somewhere, somewhere out in the country. And my cousin was with me. And we were looking up into the sky. And we noticed that there were two moons in the sky. And right after that, it was two suns. And then right after that, it was a row of five stars. The two moons, it looked like, like this picture. They were right beside each other. And then right to the right of the last moon was two suns 
I don't know if you can see that, but that's one and then that's another. They were all the same size. Um, we were watching and the second moon moved in front of the first sun and it became red, like blood. And that is when I noticed to the, to the right of the last sun, there was a row of five stars. I couldn't find a picture that shows, you know, the stars in a row. But they were big, like this, but they were all in a row. Um, at that point, the moons and the suns started to disappear, but the stars stayed there. And I tried to take a picture of it, so I got out my phone, and I was aiming, and I could not find the stars anywhere. And, like, when I was looking through my phone, they were not visible, only when I looked with my naked eye. And I kept trying to take a picture of them, but I couldn't find them. And my phone was zooming in and out really, really fast, like through a city. There was a huge city. And I could see the five stars rising over the city. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it means, but there was some type of alignment. Everything was perfectly lined up in a row. The moons, the suns, and the five stars, they were all in a row. Um, I do know that our blood moon, the last of the Tetra, it will be September 27th, 28th, depending on where you live. But I'm not exactly sure what that meant when, you know, the second moon crossed in front of the first sun and it turned red. But that was my third dream, and that was two weeks ago. One week after the dream about the moon and the two suns in the backward sunset the dream about the moon and the two suns in the backward sunset in the backward sunset in the backward sunset so she first sees two moons and again in this scenario I believe she's seeing it in the same night sky so that would be a full moon eclipsed and then full moon that makes two moons later on she sees two suns that'd be a sun it's eclipsed then you see a sun, in other words, two suns. Then she sees a planetary alignment of five planets. This happens after seeing the moons and the sun. Then after that, she sees the moon cover the sun, and it turns blood red. Well, this is exactly what happens with the astronomical events beginning in late November of 2021. Then she talks about the sun and the moon kind of disappearing and later the five planets rising over a city and the sun and the moon aligning with those five planets. From Jerusalem, you can see five planets with the naked eye, even though there's multiple planets there that you can see with Stellarium. And I think that might be alluding to she couldn't see this alignment with an electrical device like her cell phone, but she had to see it with her naked eye. The only planets that could be seen from Jerusalem right around this time period that were in the sky that were seen only by the human eye were the five planets that aligned at Jerusalem during this time. And it was right in the time of the nativity. We'll see that in other people's dreams. They keep talking about the nativity. Well, when did this five planet alignment begin? Well, it began on December 12th of 2021, if you viewed it from Jerusalem. So this parade of astronomical events, starting with the two-moon lunar eclipse in November 18th of 2021, followed by a solar eclipse on December 4th of 2021, followed by a five-planetary alignment starting right about December 12th through the nativity season, followed by another solar eclipse, a partial eclipse, on April 30th, again, prophetic fulfillment complete. And that partial eclipse then aligns with this five planetary alignment on April 30th, 2022. Followed by the super blood moon lunar eclipse of May 16th, which again is in alignment with the five stars, is fulfilled, followed by the parade starting to separate, because we're now down to four planets visible just after the blood moon of May 16th. 
Now I looked on Stellarium from 2022 up to 2030, and this sequence of events only takes place in December of 2021 into the first few months of 2022, including the alignment of the solar eclipse on April 30th and the lunar blood moon supermoon lunar eclipse on May 16th. This parade does not take place any other year, at least to the year 2030, which I checked on Stellarium. And the following information that I was able to glean from this particular dream pretty much puts everything on the map and starts pulling together all these other dreams that I've talked about and will talk about. This young lady talks about the second moon positioning itself over the first sun, causing it to turn red. What does that mean? And it took me a long time to figure it out, but once it clicked, it made so much sense, it was so simple. What it's saying is that moon will put itself over the first sun of the solar eclipse, and there is no other moon in between that moon and that sun. In other words, there won't be a month or two months or a three-month period between that lunar eclipse and the following solar eclipse. Does that happen? Well, it did not happen in 2015 when she was talking about the last blood moon of the blood moon tetrad in late September. Because between that particular blood moon and the subsequent solar eclipse, well, that was a couple months. In her vision, she would have seen what she saw plus a couple moons between the two events. She did not see another moon. The moon responsible for that lunar eclipse was the same moon cycle that was responsible for the subsequent solar eclipse. And that is only found between late November of 2021. That was the 97% lunar eclipse, which did turn the moon to blood. And that same moon cycle, two weeks later, we saw a full solar eclipse. So that moon from November put itself over the sun of December 4th. And that's what it's talking about. Even more remarkable is that this solar eclipse happened down in Antarctica. And because it was that far down, you don't get your normal coloration of a solar eclipse. This eclipse turned the first part of the phase, as the sun was starting to eclipse, it turned it red. You don't see hardly ever a solar eclipse turning red. This one did. And the second sun on that same day, when it came out of eclipse, you had a little bit of red tinge on a very small crescent, but it cleared up real quick. So in a real sense, that moon turned the sun red. I'll put this up, and you can watch a videotape of this actually transpiring. This is a very rare occurrence. It happens maybe every 40 years. The last one was right around 1999. The next one won't be till 2039. And to add just a little bit more weight to this, because it was in Antarctica, it was a backwards eclipse. In other words, instead of the eclipse going from right to left, it went from left to right. It was backwards. And you can read that on the headlines from the article that I posted there that has the video of the first phase of the sun turning red on that date. That was December 4th, 2021. So her dream that she received back in 2015 was pointing specifically and emphatically to the two eclipses at the end of last year, which was November 19th for the lunar eclipse and December 4th for the solar eclipse. And we'll see now in the next couple of visions that there are a couple of other things that were added on and they're all converging onto the same blood moon tetrad that we're currently in. And that will climax on May 16th, 2022. And I really feel I need to emphasize these facts. There's only one astronomical event where you got two moons followed by two suns, and the second moon turns the first sun to blood during a backwards sunset event, or should I say a backwards solar eclipse event. That is simply incredible. It is very specific. That leads me to believe very strongly that this was indeed a prophetic dream from the Lord, highlighting future dates of events dealing with the rapture. So do I have your attention yet? This is some incredible and amazing information, and I'm just getting warmed up. In fact, let me emphasize that last dream by giving you this next dream, which is identical to what we just saw. It too was received sometime early in 2015, and she helps us out greatly by actually drawing this out on paper, kind of giving us a pictorial timeline. But you'll see it's exactly the same dream that we just got done looking at. So take a listen, and then I'll make comments. It started out, um, I was sitting here in my backyard with my brother. And at first, I just saw these two moons, and I dreamt of two moons before. 
And in this dream, when I saw these two moons, I said in my word, okay, that's it, Jesus is coming back. The two moons. Just like this, these were actual moons. And whenever I see this in a dream, I know right then and there, that second is the rapture. No, there was like no extra time after that. I knew that was my like two second warning that the rapture was happening when I saw that. And then um, I saw like these other stars or planets and then this object. And um, I dreamt of this several times and in one dream in particular I saw like a planetary lineup and this one was the last one that had to get at the end in place it was like slowly getting in place and I knew that Jesus wouldn't come for us until this took its place and it was the final piece to the full alignment so in this dream when I saw this um, my siblings that were with me were horrified and I was excited after I saw these I went inside to tell my husband and then I saw this out the living room window but this is my living room window here literally as far as my eye could see it was the Christmas nativity scene like you sometimes see on like Christmas cards it where like the stars are out and it shows like the Christmas star the star of Bethlehem normally when you look out this particular window in my living room you can see there's like a, a horse barn and horses and trees and a road but I couldn't see anything except this it was like as if it was overlaid completely in my vision somehow I don't really know what this means but it's tied to what I saw for some reason, and the Lord always uses Christmas as rapture. So the first thing she sees, way on the left-hand side, is a moon over a moon. And what have we discussed? Two moons in the same time period most likely is speaking about a lunar eclipse. You see a full moon, then no moon, then a full moon. That's a lunar eclipse. So just following that two moon lunar eclipse, we see a dark orb with a question mark over it. And in that dark orb, you see kind of a crescent on the right hand side. I interpret that to be a solar eclipse because when the moon covers the sun, you get a dark orb, so to speak. I mean, that's how I would express it on paper. Now to the right of that, you see another moon. Now it's not two moons, it's just one moon. And I believe that is trying to convey that there is a month right there, another full moon after this solar eclipse. And then she takes her pen and she kind of goes up the page there and she says, then there's a planetary alignment. So I'm kind of guessing that this planetary alignment is at that full moon to the far right hand side. Now, if we dial in the numbers that we are coming up with in the previous dreams, the two moons in the far left would be, again, the lunar eclipse of November 19th, 2021, followed by the solar eclipse, just to the right of it, on December 4th. And the moon after that, the far right-hand moon, would be the full moon of December 18th. And the alignment of these planets begins about December 12th. I'm thinking that's what it's saying. This alignment of planets happens around the 12th. Uh, we see the full moon on the 18th, and lo and behold, that's the nativity time. And following this part of her dream, what does she see? She sees the nativity. And then she states that this dark orb with a question mark over it, which I interpret to be the solar eclipse of December 4th, well, it slowly makes its way over to the tail part of this parade of stars. Now, she didn't say how many stars, but we know that there are five prominent planets seen by the naked eye in the nativity time, and that draws out until May 16th, the full blood moon, and then Saturn kind of wisps away, and you're left with basically four planets after May 16th. And in the previous dream, this is stated kind of in a different way. That dreamer said that these stars, which are actually planets, faded away, then they came back. And I think that actually is depicting a passage of time. And in this case, the time when the sun and the moon come back around in such a way that they are now beginning to align themselves with these five planetary bodies. So in both cases, there was a passage of time for the sun and the moon to align themselves again. And in this particular dream, it appears that 
an eclipse realigned itself. And yes, there will be a realignment of a partial solar eclipse on April 30th, 2022. And then two weeks after that, the moon will eclipse into a full super blood moon on May 16th, 2022. Now, is that what happens? Does this dark orb, this solar eclipse, slowly make its way over and align with those planets? Yes, it does. It comes back as that partial solar eclipse on April 30th. Prophecy fulfilled. There it is. You can't get any more accurate than that. And like I said, I checked with Stellarium up to the year 2030, and it's happening right now from late November 2021 to May 16th, 2022. This procession or parade of stars, planets, suns, eclipses, it's all happening right now. And it doesn't ever happen again, at least up to 2030. And this young lady multiple times says she has no idea what she's looking at. So I'm left to believe it'd be hard for her to make these things up. I think she heard from the Lord. And the Lord's telling us the season that we're in. And this season is described by almost every one of these dreamers as rapture related. Either the rapture's coming, or the rapture's here, or their siblings are freaking out because of what they're seeing. Well, they're freaking out because the Great Tribulation is about to kick into high gear, is my understanding of what that means. And I think that's probably their understanding as well. So my point is, by just using simple astronomy and maybe leaning heavily upon Stellarium, we can actually see this take place in a virtual setting that Stellarium provides us. And it's happening exactly how they saw it in their dreams if we apply the two celestial objects being a eclipse, either a lunar eclipse when you've got two moons, or a solar eclipse when you've got two suns. It's real simple. And it lines up with this virtual reality is going to turn into, which is reality. That's the purpose of these software packages, is to show us in advance what's going to happen in the heavens. Now I'm going to play another dream this young lady had, where again, it's giving us an exact date of when the tail end of this procession is going to take place. And it's pointing to the full super blood moon of May 16th. And it will be confirmed again quite dramatically by Stellarium. In other words, the second dream that she has is also prophetic. So at the risk of being overbearing and dry and drawn out, I'm just going to plug in the dates again as you see it with this young lady's dream. Two moons to the far left, November 19th, 2021. Dark orb with a question mark over it. That's a solar eclipse, December 4th, 2021. The moon to the right of that is the full moon of December around December 18th. The planets, that she kind of points to, above that December full moon, comes into view December 12th, 2021, over the full moon of December 18th, 2021. And when that dark orb with a question mark over it slowly and finally aligns itself with those planets that she saw, well, that happens on April 30th, 2022, which is immediately followed by the super blood moon of May 16th, which is not in this particular dream. It's in the next dream that I just made reference of. So the remaining dreams that I'm going to look at are going to focus heavily on that last event of this parade of eclipses, moons, suns, and stars. And that's going to be on the two moon, or should I say the blood moon, or should I say the lunar eclipse of May 16th, 2022. So you can just assume that I'm going to dial into that particular event on this timeline and go directly into these dreams to see if that is indeed the two moons that they dreamt about in the prophetic dream. I'll then check that against all the blood moons from the time the dream was received up into the four blood moon tetrad that's in the year 2032 and 2033. I think you will easily see that these two moon dreams are speaking of that one eclipse that we will see on May 16th, 2022. So here's that second dream I promised you from the same young lady whose dream we just looked at. And a quick reminder, this is the one who had two moons followed by that dark orb with a question mark over it. And, and that dark orb slowly moving its way into a procession of planets. She called stars or planets. She had that first dream back in 2015. Well, she had another one about a year, year and a half ago. And you're looking at it here at your screen. Let her explain what she saw, and then I'll make comment on it. Usually in these dreams, where I see two moons and I know the rapture is happening. Usually it's always two full moons like this, like two actual separate physical moons. In this dream, it felt more like 
even though I saw the moons just exactly like this, how you see them here, this one was here and this one was here, it seemed as though these weren't two separate moons. It felt more like it was just showing me two different phases of the moon but they were positioned like this. So I don't think there was two of them. It was just illustrating these different phases. So this one up here, I could tell that this was the moon. I could see the physical outline of the moon. I could see the detail of like the craters and everything, but it was completely dark. It was in a completely dark phase. There was no illumination to it whatsoever but somehow I could still just see the outline of it. So even though it was completely dark, I could tell that the moon was there. So it was the moon in a completely dark phase. And then down here, I saw the moon completely full and lit up. And this is what I said in the dream. When we saw this, this is what I said. I said, the moon will be dark at midnight and bright at one o'clock. The bridegroom comes at the midnight hour. Okay, so I'll read that again. The moon will be dark at midnight and bright again an hour later at one o'clock. The bridegroom comes at the midnight hour. Okay, so I'm not going to put my own thoughts or interpretation behind that. I'm just telling you what I saw and what I said in the dream. And this is not something that I would say. But in the dream, when I said this, we just started celebrating and jumping up and down with excitement like children. And we were just like, oh, oh my gosh, because we knew that this meant rapture and Jesus was coming. So we were just celebrating and joyful and excited. And like I said, we were just jumping up and down, just so excited, like kids on Christmas morning. And that was the dream. So I specifically asked him to give me more about the moons and the tie it has to the rapture and the dreams that he gives us. I know so many of you guys have had this dream. And this is what I got. I saw this and I said, the moon will be dark at midnight and the bridegroom comes at the midnight hour. Jesus is the bridegroom. We are the bride and he is the bridegroom and he comes at the midnight hour. It's kind of obvious to me what that's saying, even though I'm not going to say it. But what kind of gets me is why it just decided to throw that in there. The moon will be dark at midnight and bright at one o'clock. That's kind of random to me. I don't know. So I just wanted to share this with you guys and see what you guys think. And that's all I have for now. So, all right, bye. So here she sees two orbs, one over the other. One is a dark orb over a yellow colored or bright orb. And what she said in the dream was the moon will be dark at midnight and bright again at one o'clock. And the bridegroom will come in the midnight hour. She also stated in posting about six months ago where she went over it again, thinking that that dark orb was a dark moon, which it's not. She keeps stating that she has no idea what these things are. And that's why she was seeking out well, what does this mean? What is that dark orb? Is it a dark moon or a dead moon or a fully waned moon? Or is it something else? This is my take on it. The moon will be dark at midnight. That is your dark orb that is over the other orb. That is the top orb. And it's the moon being dark at midnight. It doesn't mean the moon is fully waned at 0% illumination. That, I believe, is a lunar eclipse. Why do I believe that? Because an hour later, it's a full moon. You don't have a fully waned moon and an hour later, it's a full moon. That's impossible. You can only have a wane moon, and then two weeks later, you can have a full moon. That's two weeks. But a 
recording what she said, the moon will be dark at midnight and bright again at 1 o'clock. Didn't say 1 o'clock a.m. or p.m., just at 1 o'clock. So just in her narrative, she is describing a lunar eclipse. And like I said, the top moon is when it's eclipsed. The bottom moon is when it comes out of the eclipse and it's bright again. Now, the interesting thing, and this is what ties it all in, is that if you go look at that full super blood moon on May 16th, and you look at the time when it is still dark, still eclipsed in its respective time zone, which is right over kind of the western side of South America, that happens at midnight. And it's bright again at one o'clock. Exactly what she said in the dream. She spoke this out. That fact alone identifies a very specific blood moon lunar eclipse. The only one I could find going back a couple years because she had that dream about a year, year and a half ago to the year 2030, the only lunar eclipse where in its time zone, the moon is dark at midnight, completely dark, and bright again at one o'clock is the moon we've been talking about, the super blood moon of May 16th, 2022. And she even said, you know, I could see the outline of the moon, I could see the craters and stuff like that. You can't see anything with a fully waned moon, a fully dead moon, a moon that has zero illumination. You can't see anything. That's why when you observe a solar eclipse, the sun is just there minding its own business and all of a sudden the moon comes across. Well, the moon is there all the time. You just can't see it because it's not reflecting any light to break through the atmosphere where you could see its location. It's totally gone. Same thing at night when it's a fully waned moon or nearly fully waned. You can't see anything because there's no light being reflected from it. But she saw the moon. She saw the outskirts of it. Um, she later said God told her the word silhouette. You only see the silhouette of a dark moon during a lunar eclipse. You do not see a silhouette silhouette of a moon that is fully waned with 0% illumination. So what she saw was a lunar eclipse and the fact that the times that were involved and the times that she stated in her dream match to only one lunar eclipse in that time span that I mentioned. And like I said, that's May 16th, 2022, right at midnight, one o'clock. It's in the, the fifth time zone from Greenwich, England. So now again, we have very specific details brought out in these dreams and they they will come to pass because we can find it and duplicate it on this software of Stellarium. And that tells me this was a genuine prophetic dream from God. Except there is one huge glaring issue or problem with her dream. If we were to dial it in to that blood moon of May 15th into the 16th, which is followed by this year's Passover. And that is... And I'm speaking from a time right now, which requires an update. So I'm, I'm talking to you right now from the second week of October 2022. Obviously, the bridegroom did not come in any midnight hour that I'm aware of on or about this full moon. So what happened? Well, on my learning curve, trying to figure out all these times and dates, midnight hours, locations of eclipses, all the stuff, I've come to realize that there are a lot of parameters. Which midnight hour are you talking about? A midnight hour in Jerusalem? A midnight hour underneath the eclipse? A midnight hour at the International Dateline, which is universally accepted as the last few seconds of each and every day? Do we dial in daylight savings time? Do you start the count of this darkened moon when it first enter into the light shadow of the Earth? That's called the Earth's penumbra. Or when it's leaving its eclipse phase, traveling back into the other side of the Earth's light shadow, the penumbra. Or is the dark section that she's talking about, is that when it's only in the umbra, the dark shadow of the Earth. That which causes the infrared light shift that turns the moon to blood. I mean, you got all these things to consider and figure out what does the moon will be dark at midnight and light again at one o'clock. And after struggling with all those parameters, trying to figure out what they meant, I failed to apply them to the other blood moon of this year, that being the blood moon of Tabernacles on November 7th into the 8th. And I discarded that idea probably more because when I first came upon this stuff it was the first part of this year, and I was looking for an early ticket out of here. So obviously the May 15th through 16th blood moon looked really appetizing. And so that's where I applied everything. And any little discrepancy would quickly have me disqualify that second blood moon of this year, that being the last blood moon of this four blood moon tetrad, this tetrad being the middle tetrad of three tetrads, 
Well, that blood moon did not get my vote, and it should have, because just in the last few days, the Lord took me back to it, kind of rubbed my nose in it, and yes, that blood moon also will have the full moon darken at midnight and bright again at 1 o'clock or the 1 o'clock hour. And what you're seeing up on your screen is Stellarium's representation of that November 7th through the 8th blood moon, the last blood moon of the four blood moon tetrad we're currently in. And you can check out the clock, that bar with the year, date, and time on it. And you can see this thing cycle through its complete eclipse phase as it travels into the light shadow of the earth, then into the dark shadow of the earth, and then back out. It will turn to blood and then as it's coming out it will darken and finally travel through the entire phase to where it is a full bright moon again and this rendering would be as if you were standing on the international dateline west watching all this unfold i don't recommend anybody really do that because you got to fly to a small island in the middle of the pacific and if it's a cloudy night you've got problems so just trust stellarium's rendition this is what it looks like it fulfills Holly Two Moons dream to a T. And even though the Lord was showing me that many of these dreams had double application, the first getting us to look at the May 16th Passover, and the second now to look at the November 9th Tabernacles, well, this one clinched it for me. Because back at the end of the last year, beginning of this year, when he first started dialing all this stuff in and trying to discern and decode and decipher, what all these dreams were pointing to, especially this one, well, it perfectly matched a May 15th, May 16th fulfillment of that dark moon over a bright moon. Perfectly matched. What was I supposed to do with that? And my learning curve hadn't brought me up to speed to really get into the fine details of discerning some of this stuff, so I naturally disregarded the last blood moon of this four blood moon tetrad, but now it has come back to haunt me, so to speak. <laughs> But uh, this is the moon. This is it. It matches perfectly as well. And again, this all leads me to believe that God is giving dreams that have double application to get us to focus on one step at a time. And the last step that we're going to be led in is walking through all of God's appointed times, his covenant dates, and his convocations. And it all will be done according to his Hebrew calendar, the one that Moses used, not the ones that you're going to find on YouTube. And ironically speaking, the one that Moses used was practiced and observed by the majority of the Middle East peoples going all the way back to Noah, with the exception of God dialing in a completed, harvested, and processed ripe barley grain where the kernel is ripe and matured and stored away until that wave offering of that barley grain can be waved before the Lord and consumed by the priests themselves and consumed on God's altar. The heathen didn't have that. The Babylonians didn't have that because they were not in covenant with God. They based their spring on the spring equinox. God based his Rosh Hashanah, that's Exodus chapter 12, he based it on the harvest because it represented Christ, the first fruit of the brethren. Jesus is that barley grain, crushed and pounded and baked and consumed by God a matured and sweet Savior unto the Lord. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of God's calendar, the beginning of God's chronometer, his clock, and that's represented by the barley, not the spring equinox. So you're looking at the update for this dark moon over a bright moon from Holly Two Moons. There is no other blood moon until the year 2025. In fact, 2025 and 2026 actually gives us a four blood moon tetrad but they cannot be dialed in to either of God's appointed times that rely on a blood moon, that being Passover and Tabernacles. Because the blood moon of 2026, I believe, is in the first few days of March. And not even the compromised Hebrew religious leaders that rely on the spring equinox would ever stand for Passover being in the first week of March. So that 2025, 2026 or blood moon tetrad is easily disqualified as being anything that's supposed to represent one of God's appointed times. The next tetrad that does is in 2032 and 2033. Those blood moons line up with God's appointed times. So I'm thinking even more so now that this November 7th through 8th blood moon is assigned to this year's first day of tabernacles, which will be November 9th. 
and we're getting a lot of dreams of late, especially the last couple of weeks, that strongly suggest that there will be some end time events, and I mean big ones, presenting themselves on the seven days of tabernacles, possibly into the eighth day. I'm just saying, more dreams are lining up, emphasizing this specific blood moon. In fact, there are dreams suggesting that there's going to be a huge sign in the heavens before this partial solar eclipse on October 25th, the following day, October 26th, being the Festival of Trumpets. And if it does happen, it would be a perfect fulfillment of Acts chapter 2, where God said he's going to show signs and wonders in the heavens. So I'm sorry if these double applications of these many dreams have rained on your parade. They certainly have rained on mine. But I can see why God had to do it and has to do it because very few people are paying attention to his Hebrew calendar that he gave Moses. And maybe just to emphasize something she said in her dream concerning this dream is that it's rapture related. The bridegroom's coming in the midnight hour. Which midnight hour? Uh, your guess is good as mine. Midnight hour in Jerusalem? Midnight hour at the International Dateline West? Midnight hour on that specific night? or midnight hour on the first day of tabernacles, which happens the next day. Let me just say I'm extremely confident now that this is the eclipse, the blood moon, that she saw in her dream. Nothing even gets close until 10 years from now, during that next tetrad. And the question has to be asked, what rapture are we talking about? Is it the out-translation of the bride? Is it the out-translation of the bride party, the 144,000? Is it the out-translation of the guests for the wedding? I, I believe there are multiple out-translations. So what's still left intact is what Jesus said, no man will know the day or the hour. Because in this situation, even though there are dates being illuminated, being emphasized in these dreams, we don't know what it applies to. But obviously it applies to something big. And so make sure your hearts are ready and that you're pursuing the Lord as a bride would pursue her groom. And this occurred on June 18th of 2020. So I was in my house and I looked out I opened the door and I saw a manger scene outside. And then I saw these candles and they looked like little wicks. And they were burning quickly to the bottom. And as they were burning to the bottom, they started looking more like fireworks. And it was beautiful. It was almost like a countdown. And as I noticed that they were all over the neighborhood, I look up in the sky and I see this huge green moon and it was a hazy dark sky and then it started to rain hail balls fire hail balls and there was this other planet to the left of the green moon and it was like the actual moon it was a full moon it, the the green moon was so big that it made the moon look like a, a giant star it was far smaller than the green moon i was praying and rejoicing and getting ready because i knew that when this hail started coming down and the fire from the sky that I knew this was the rapture. Well, it should be obvious why I added this to the collection of dreams that I'm reviewing, that nativity scene plays a large part in that decision. This is a celestial storyline that fits snugly with the two previous celestial storylines that we just looked at. And what I mean by a celestial storyline is that there is a story being told. You have one celestial event, followed by another event, followed by another event, followed by another event. And it was revealed in the last two storylines that these match up with what I would call a celestial timeline. That being a timeline expressed through a progression or a parade of stars and planets and constellations as expressed through virtual planetary software. And I'm using the software Stellarium, which appears to be kind of the standard for all us amateur astronomers. In this particular dream, it starts out with the nativity scene. Then the next event is there's candles burning, which morphs into sparklers burning, and then it morphs into fireworks and celebrations such as New Year's Eve. Then there's a countdown, again pointing towards that time of the year, New Year's Eve. She then sees a huge green moon, and to the left of it, a smaller full moon. And then it started to rain fire hail balls. Then she prayed, and there was a rapture event. So it should be obvious that the nativity, the candles, the sparklers, and the beginning of the countdown all suggest the end of a particular year. And when we apply this celestial storyline to the previous two, that time was when the five planets showed up and started to align. 
Now, the fact that she described this green moon as being huge suggests a supermoon. And where have we seen this before? May 16th, coming up here shortly. So why is she seeing the supermoon as being green? Well, if you dig into the Farmer's Almanac, you'll find descriptions for each month of the year. There's only one month that has multiple titles that deal with a heavy emphasis of green. That is the month of May. I'll throw it up here on the screen for you to read. We've got green frogs, we got green fertility, we got planting, we got budding trees, we got budding leaves. All this is green, green, green. And it's the only month where this is found in multiple titles. I could not find any other month where the term or the terminology or the typology of green is used this strongly or at all for that matter. And what about this smaller full moon just to the left of it? Well, we've kind of saw this before. In fact, in the very first dream where the lady said she saw two full bright moons, one was just a little bit smaller than the other one was referring to the first bright phase of the moon being a different size to the second bright phase of the moon after it came out of eclipse. Well, in this case, the same thing happens. We have a full moon before it goes into eclipse, and it is at a certain distance from the Earth. When it gets into full eclipse and is in full eclipse, it's actually closer to the Earth, so it's going to present a larger silhouette from our perspective. Even though the naked eye can't really make out that difference, Stellarium did. So you start with a large, full, bright moon, because it is a supermoon, and then it gets bigger, barely, but it gets bigger while it's in its colored state, which is the eclipse. And instead of defining it as being red, because that is what a full lunar eclipse will present, she saw it as a huge green moon because the green represented May. Now there is another green moon that the Farmer's Almanac celebrates each year, and that's the green corn moon of August, and that will be a super moon. Problem is, the full moon just before that is also a super moon, and that kind of checks her narrative where there was a regular planet or regular moon to the left of this super green moon. So that doesn't quite fit, but obviously there hasn't been any hailstones falling of late. So it's possible her narrative is a little bit confused, or she didn't quite remember it correctly, or something to that effect, unless she was seeing it from a perspective south of the equator in the southern hemisphere. In which case, that regular moon, being to the left of that supermoon, could easily represent the harvest moon of September. Note that all these little pieces of information have significant impact on how to decode what they actually saw. Is it right to left or is it left to right? In this case, I don't think I'll ever know. I've, I've tried contacting this young lady to get a more definite rendering of what she saw, but it was never able to make contact. So I'm just going to leave this storyline of the green moon to be God's attempt to put more emphasis on the month of May because in the narrative it seems so close to that nativity scene and what I would say was a New Year's Eve countdown. And that the hail balls she saw, which is judgment, was still part of the dream, but it was meant for another day. So now I'm going to look at some dreams that focus heavily on that anchor event that I believe applies to this celestial storyline we've been looking at, and that is the super blood moon of May 16th. This one's quite interesting. Not only does he see a huge moon on the horizon, like these other dreamers had, but he posted it back in 2015. And what stood out even more for me was that in the dream, his auntie asked the question as whether this was the blood moon that Jesus would return on. So he's seeing it as a double moon, she is seeing it as a blood moon. That's information that should be educating us to the fact that a double moon, same night, is a lunar eclipse. Therefore, a lunar eclipse is a blood moon. Other people see it as a dirty moon, and that is what an eclipse moon looks like just before it comes out of eclipse. It comes out of a red phase into a dirty phase, and then comes out of the eclipse and looks like a normal, full, bright moon. And being that he posted this back in 2015, it inspired me to look at the full four blood moons of the 2014-2015 Tetrad, and the Tetrad that's coming up in 10 years from now, that's the year 2032 and 2033. And the search parameter I was looking for was, is there a super blood moon with low elevation that will fall upon what appears to be an appointed time of God, such as Passover or Tabernacles? And what I discovered is out of the three blood moon tetrads, 2014, 2015, the one we're currently in, and the one 10 years from now, 
what I discovered is that there is only one super blood moon that fulfills that criteria, and that's the super blood moon of May 16th, 2022, which is in a couple months. So in my dream, I was at my grandmother's house. My auntie was in the kitchen. I think she was making dinner. I looked up on my left side, and I see the moon, and I said, wow. The moon was so big. I mean, it was just so big. And my auntie was wondering if this moon represented one of the blood moons that Jesus Christ was coming. And she said, um, if the moon is red, I think Jesus is coming. And I said, oh my gosh, he is coming. And the moon was so big. I mean, how can I explain it? It was like the moon was literally on the grass. It was like literally like an orb, like a big giant orb floating off the grass. But I knew the moon was over her horizon because how can the moon flow off the grass? Like it, was, it was like the moon was literally on earth, like inside of earth. And so I went to the front door. My grandmother went straight to a car. And I said, Grandmother, look at the moon. And she said, Wow. And so they went back inside because it was raining. It was thunder way too hard. And then the moon, you know, was still there. And then um, we went back inside. And so it's like something told me to look up. I looked up and I said, wait a second. Wait a second. Is that the moon? Wait. There was two moons. Two. I looked up. And I saw the real moon, like the real, real moon, because usually in South Carolina, the moon doesn't really get that big. It was like it was a full moon and the moon was literally above me. Like the moon was like about to go over um, and the sun about to come up. But it was like it was like maybe like two o'clock in the morning, probably. And then um, I was like, wait a second, if that's the full moon. And then my grandmother said, they go on, they go on, look. And it's in the, I can't explain it. Let's again focus on some of the things he said. He kept emphasizing this is a huge moon, huge moon. Well, that's a super moon, obviously. Certainly isn't a micro moon. And towards the end there, he talks about the sun coming up at 2 a.m. How does that figure? Well, we saw earlier in this video where a dreamer saw the two suns and the two moons, and it was daytime. I'm assuming it was daytime during both events. And it appears that those two events will be the partial solar eclipse on April 30th of this year and the super blood moon lunar eclipse on May 16th. And I've come across a couple other YouTube postings of dreams where this blood moon is seen during the daytime. So this conundrum is solved when you understand that there are two scenes going on in this dream. In other words, there are two parts to this celestial storyline. The first part is when he sees this huge moon, and Auntie calls it a red blood moon, and he's amazed that this thing is on the grass and then in the earth. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that he's seeing this super blood moon at a very low elevation. It's touching the horizon and actually goes below the horizon, which he described as it being in the earth. And I'll show you here in a few seconds, that is exactly what's going to happen. He then goes into the house with his friends, and a while later in this dream, he comes back out the front door with his grandma going to her car, and she points over to some celestial objects, and he looks up and he sees two moons followed by a full moon. This is where he says that from the area of his home, South Carolina, he observed this full moon kind of doing an up and over. He does this with his hand, up and over. Mentions it's about 2 a.m. in the morning, and then remarks something about the sun coming up. Well, the sun never comes up at 2 a.m. in the morning, but it will in Jerusalem at this 2 a.m. that he's experiencing. And when we check this against the Stellarium storyline, we'll see that at 2 a.m., the moon on May 16th, 2022, at South Carolina, has just come out of its lunar eclipse full blood moon phase. It's now a regular super moon, brightly shining, no longer red, and it reaches its apex right about 2 a.m., just like he saw back in 2015 in this dream. So if you don't believe me, here I'll throw up the Stellarium celestial storyline. Here's the moon at midnight, 
check out the elevation on the numbers on the left of this picture. And here's 1 o'clock a.m., here's 2 o'clock a.m., here's 3 o'clock a.m. And you'll see it's getting higher in elevation between midnight and 1 a.m. It levels off around 2 a.m. and it starts to drop at 3 a.m. This is what he calls the moon about to go over and up and over and he makes a gesture with his hand showing the up and over movement of the moon. This is exactly what will happen at 2 a.m. at this location in South Carolina on this day. And let me throw this up. This is the sun about to rise as the moon starts to set in Jerusalem on the day in question and you can see a shadow forming on the upper left hand part of the moon as it's starting to set below the horizon. That's the redness of the coming full blood moon red eclipse. That's where it's starting. At that moment, the sun's coming up, and he mentions that towards the end of his video. The sun's coming up at 2 a.m. Well, not in South Carolina, but it is in Jerusalem. So let me run it by you real quick. He saw a full, huge moon sitting on the grass, and a little bit later, it's in the earth. Then we go to the next scene, and he sees two moons. I believe that represents a lunar eclipse day, but he's looking at the real moon. And the real moon is overhead at his location in South Carolina, and it goes up and over at 2 a.m., and then something about the sun coming up. There is only one day I could find from 2015 to the year 2033 that fulfill this criteria that he saw in his dream. And we will see in the coming dreams that we will examine the same thing over and over again. From the huge moon sitting on the horizon to it dipping below the horizon, all focusing on that day of May 16th, 2022. So I promised you a virtual rendering of the super moon sitting on the grass, followed by of the super blood moon being in the earth. And you will see that this is exactly what happens. So right at about sunrise in Jerusalem on the day of question, we have a moon set. And it only takes minutes for this moon to set and drop below the horizon. But just before it does, you'll see a small shadow begin to develop on the upper left-hand side of the moon. That is the beginning of the eclipse. The moon is starting to turn red. And what you're seeing is the shadow of the Earth slowly enveloping the moon. The more the Earth's shadow covers the moon, the more the moon will be red. And it doesn't turn fully red until about an hour after moonset. In other words, it's below the horizon, or as this young man saw, it's in the Earth. And I only found this celestial timeline in Stellarium to unfold once between the year 2015 and the year 2033. It perfectly matches his celestial storyline where that full, huge moon sits on the grass. That's that green horizon at the bottom of your screen. And then the blood moon being in the earth. And that's when the blood moon comes into its full glory far below the horizon. He describes it as it being in the earth. And before we move on, pay close attention to this moment of the Stellarium timeline. It answers the question that I have to the right, when can a full moon be called a half moon? This question is kind of asked by one of the dreamers that we are going to review again here shortly. It answers both that question and the question she posed to receive the dream, which is, Lord, when is your return? It looks like God most likely gave her the answer, and we're looking at it right now. But for now, I'm going to continue to focus on these huge blood moons that people have been seeing in their dreams. And before I send you to part two of this five-part series, well, this last vision with this young man talking about his auntie and this huge blood moon under the earth or in the earth, well, you probably noticed I was speaking future tense. And that's because when I made that part of this video, that was at the beginning of this year. So here is the update. There is no update not on his dream, other than I'd like to make comment on what he heard in the dream of what his auntie said. Could this be the blood moon where Jesus returns? Something to that effect. And the answer is, no, it wasn't. But it gets me thinking, it's going to be on a blood moon. We're just not sure which one it is. And that is how God keeps us guessing. That's how God keeps us engaged. And like I said, if God is going to walk us through all his appointed times, his covenant dates and convocations in this year, which I consider the prophetic year, 2022, then that last blood moon of this current blood moon tetrad we're in could be infused with some incredible prophetic events. 
because that's the last blood moon of this year, and that is attached to Tabernacles, which is the last appointed feast of God for 2022, with that eighth day being a holy convocation. And I've seen this before in other dreams and visions that people have shared, where a particular comment is made, just like this one from his auntie in the dream, is this the blood moon? No, but I think the emphasis is on blood moon. So everything else in this dream was accurate and represented by Stellarium, and I don't think that comment that his auntie in the dream made diminishes any part of it. I'm quite confident that that dream was from the Lord, and he wants us to figure this stuff out, which means we have to engage ourselves and employ ourselves in figuring it out. In other words, get busy and get into it. So with all that said, let's go to part two in this series of five videos. And you can do that by just pulling your cursor up to the right hand corner of your screen, pull down that I card, click on that I card, and a menu of videos will come down. The first one being that second part. So let's look at some more dreams and get through this learning curve and possibly discover what God has in store for us.